Hi, and welcome to BoJack Season 2. Season 2 of BoJack takes up in many different ways a set of questions which is just as fundamental as the questions we looked at in Season 1, but quite different. I think that Season 2 is focused in multiple ways on what philosophers call epistemology. Epistemology is the study of basically what we know and how we know it. It's the question of what it takes to know something and how we can be confident that we know something and the various ways in which we might be tricked into thinking knowledge that we don't have. Epistemology also thinks about how we judge when other people know things. How do we decide when to trust somebody, when to take them as a knower, and when not to trust them. If you watch this season carefully, you'll notice that it loops through all sorts of different epistemological questions and themes, round and round, weaving them all together. But throughout the entire season, there are constantly questions of how can we be confident in what we know? Is reality what we think it is? Or are we being fooled? And when should we trust other people? And when should we trust ourselves? Indeed, the title of Mr. Peanut Butter's show within the show, which is itself a major theme of the season, is of course, Hollywood stars and celebrities. Do they know things? What do they know? Let's find out, which is also the basis for the title for this class, as you know. So the show seems kind of like a ridiculous, silly game show, but if you think about it, that title refers to what's going on in the season outside of the show as well, because most of the characters on BoJack are Hollywood stars and celebrities, and in fact they are struggling throughout season two with just those questions. What do they know? Do they know things? And then also with the more social question of let's find out, right? Let's look at other people and figure out how much we can trust them and whether they know. So throughout the season the characters are worrying about their own epistemological status, as philosophers would put it, their own status as knowers, and they're also trying to find out other people's epistemological status, try to figure out who they can trust and who they can't and why. So for example, think about how Mr. Peanut Butter sets up absolutely bizarre conditions on the show when Bojack comes and visits, right? He makes Bojack look like a laughably unreliable knower. He says over and over again throughout that episode, oh my goodness, we can't believe how little you know. It turns out you know nothing. And the whole audience laughs at Bojack and what an unreliable knower he is. But of course, this is because Mr. Peanut Butter has set up a series of bizarre questions that Bojack couldn't possibly know, right? So the situation is, as it were, gamed against him. There's no chance that he could come off as a reliable and normal knower in this situation. But not only does this give other people the impression that Bojack isn't a proper knower, but it's completely disorienting for Bojack as well. Right? And there's an important point there, which is that when we start to lose confidence in ourselves as a knower, because the world is being weird and unexpected and things or other people are telling us that we don't know what we thought we knew, it's deeply disorienting and unsettling. We no longer know what to hold on to as real, and we no longer understand quite who we are or what our capacities are. Now, this happens several times during the course of the episode, uh, sorry, me, sorry, during the course of the season, right? Most obviously, it happens on the show, which is this explicitly epistemological show, right? Do they know things? What do they know? Let's find out. The name of the show is an epistemological name. And as I just explained, the show is set up in such a way as to disorient Bojack and make him lose hold of his sense of reality and his grip on himself as a knower. But to give another example, this is what the director of Secretariat and his mother collude to do to him as well. So if you remember the scene where his mom shows up and tells him that he inherited being broken inside, and it feels like he and his mom are for once having this real moment of connection, this real sort of authentic moment of bonding and emotional connection with one another, which is very rare because his mother is so horrible and unapproachable. In fact, though, the moment is fake, it's staged. The director has paid his mom or somehow or other cajoled his mom to show up and say these things to him specifically to make him 
sad and sentimental so as to capture him being sad and sentimental on camera for the purposes of the scene in the movie that they're trying to get. So the entire thing is staged and it's not what it seems. And here too, once Bojack finds this out, he has that moment of disorientation, of realizing that what felt like solid knowledge and the testimony of his senses, a moment that he felt like he was understanding, he in fact didn't understand. And that's a powerful thing to experience. By the way, as an aside, please notice how this happens with his mom over and over again throughout the entire series. This is one of the things I want you to track, right? His mom is obviously very difficult to bond with. She's a very difficult person, but much more specifically, every now and again in the show, there will be a moment that seems like a real moment of bonding or connection with his mother. And over and over again, it'll turn out that that bonding and that connection is based in some rather dramatic way on an illusion or a hallucination or a confusion or some other way in which reality is not what it seems. And that's a really powerful ongoing fact about Bojack's um, relationship to his mom. But also something that you should ask yourself when you're thinking about this is, are those moments of bonding fake if they're based on illusion or hallucination or confusion? Does that mean they're not real? Or are they real somehow even though they require illusion and confabulation in order to happen? I don't think the show actually gives us a clear answer to that question. It gives us different answers at different times, and it's something that you should be thinking about. Okay, but back to epistemology. Another really important moment in the show in this season along these lines where the question of who knows what and how do we know is um, explicitly at issue. Think about the big fight that um, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane have at her surprise party, which she didn't even want. That's also significant. We'll get back to that in a moment. She insists that Tony Curtis is dead, and he doesn't believe her, and he fact-checks her on his phone. And furthermore, he does it in front of any everybody. Right? Why is this so enraging to her? Who cares? if Tony Curtis is dead or not? Why is this a moment of such intense emotional power? Partly because it's at the surprise party she didn't want. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. But also, what's important about the scene, I think, for the purposes of the arc of the show is Mr. Peanut Butter is very publicly here undermining her authority as a knower. As a knower. He's undermining her as someone who can be trusted to report on normal everyday knowledge of the sort that we don't normally think requires like a whole bunch of fact checking. And that's what's so infuriating to Diane is she's not being treated as a person who's capable of being trusted as a knower on everyday matters. Now that episode is fascinating from an epistemological point of view for many other reasons as well, because notice that in that episode, the episode of um, Diane's surprise party, everybody in that episode is at one point or another talking to somebody non-existent. They have an illusion about who they're talking to, and they have a conversation based on a fundamentally wrong understanding of who they're talking to. So Todd gets into a long conversation with Siri. Todd's and Caroline's, Princess Caroline's phones end up talking to one another for a long time. As I mentioned, I said I would come back to it, Mr. Peanut Butter is interacting with this fantasy version of Diane. We talked about this in season one as well, right? He has this version of Diane in his mind as this person who would enjoy a surprise party and tons of attention, even though she's tried to show him again and again that she's not that person. And he's interacting with a fake version of Diane when he stages that party. And so he's created a projected image of himself in her, and he's interacting not with the real her, but with a fake version of her. We also already talked about how Bojack is interacting with a fake version of his mom. But of course, the funniest and most dramatic example of this in the season is Princess Caroline and her boyfriend, Vincent Adultman, who is actually three children stacked on top of one another under a trench coat. And she manages to make it the entire way through the season 
not understanding that she's interacting with somebody who is completely fake and not anything like she thinks he is. So everybody in this season feels like they're engaging with reality, but they're confused about whether they are or not. And I want you to keep this in mind. We'll get back to this at the end of this series of lectures for season two, but to what extent is that true also when Bojack goes to visit Charlotte and has his encounter with Penny? To what extent is he also engaging with what he feels like reality, but which is in fact a fake reality? Hey, there are all kinds of fake selves all the way through this season, not just Vincent Adult Man and Siri, but most strikingly, um, Bojack's fake computer image of himself, who ends up being the one who gives the performance in Secretariat in the end that he gets credit for, right? It's a fake Be Bojack that ends up doing that job. We also have Wanda in this season. She's not a fake self, but she's an interesting version of a self from an epistemological point of view, right? She's special because she doesn't know anything about the last 30 years because she's been in a coma. And so she's very often confident in herself and completely wrong. She does not have a lot of um, epistemological self-knowledge or self-concern compared to some of the other characters this season, right? She sort of very confidently goes along making proclamations about what's trendy and what's a good idea and how things should be done, but it's based on a reality that doesn't exist anymore. Right? She's living through outdated references and with a completely outdated understanding of how the world around her works. So she's operating inside a fake reality. She's deeply sympathetic. I think, you know, it's hard to watch the show and not love Wanda. She's a great character, but in a way she's not a complete person. Right? She's not engaged in the actual world. She's engaged in a different world that no longer exists. And it's kind of interesting that this is a person who would appeal to Bojack, this kind of incomplete person living in a false reality. That's worth thinking about. Okay. I'm going to pause there and then we'll move on to part two.